available. And we are looking at the NDC now. It appears that uh, they've got everything sorted out. They have already vetted their candidates. They are busily campaigning. Mahama is here. We're not Walk us through who is running for what yeah. in the NDC now. First thing I'll say before we do that is when you study the two main political parties, they are very different, yet they are very similar. So there are similarities more in governance, but there are differences in the internal politics. So for example, the first thing you observe is that for most presidential primaries, NDC always has fewer candidates than MPP, all the time. Whether they're in government or not. They, they don't, in fact, then 2019 was an aberration where they had all those. So usually, it's, a very, it's two or three people. Mills, Kwesi Botre, Spio Gabra Mills, Nana Kunedu Mills. It's always a few people. Mm -hmm. Which, which could be because of their antecedent, the pseudo declaration, Rollins anoints males. One leader. So they, they, they don't seem to tolerate a lot of dissension. When they decide that they want to go for election, and usually the person who wins, wins by over 90%. That's the first thing you notice. And if you look at this field that you are talking about, this field is much smaller. It's probably one of the smallest fields you've had in a long time, just three. Right? 2019, there were about six or seven. So this is the first thing to notice. MPP will always have a lot more people. They claim it's because they are more democratic. Mm -hmm. And particularly when NDC is in opposition, this is what you get. Former President John Dramani Mahama, former Kumasi Metropolitan mm -hmm. Chief Executive Kojo Bonsu, former Governor and uh, Rawlings, former Finance Minister and the Mills, Business Mogio, Dr. Kanad before. These are the three now, if you Faces. look at, you know, since you're giving the history, so it's almost, even this number is big. If you compare males, Konedu, well, there were just two. Yeah, I mean, and they are, even they are, in that contest, yeah. Spiogabra, you know, withdrew to let Nana Konedu, and I, I, and I remember vividly how he did the withdrawal in the house of Jay Rollins, whose wife was now running in that election. So we had two there. Again, 97% for males. Uh, Konedu did badly, 3%. This time around, we have three people going lower than the last figure, would it make any difference? It, it, would, it would not because usually in the previous election you referred to, there, there were, there were what, what you would call power blocks that were being contested. So the Rawlings block, the Mills block. Then you have the, the former Mills people, the Mahama people. Mm -hmm. But now it's like there's only Mahama. It's only Mahama. So that's the first thing to notice. Now, the, Power centers around personalities in our politics. And so, John Mahama is the front runner. Let's but there's, a, but there's, a difference, there's a difference, mm -hmm. though. Mm -hmm. So, one of the reasons why in NDC the front runner usually wins well is also a question of resources, right? But for the first time, you have a candidate who is a man of means, right? Dr. Kanan Dufour is a very wealthy man. So, I want us to do candidate. So, go to Mahama okay. next. And All right, then, so you want, you want to... You yes, want to, so let's do Mahama and then move on to the other candidates. I mean, look, <laughs> he's, I mean, Mahama has dominated Ghana's political scene since my days in university. All right, so as communication minister, before he then became the uh, running mate, which was much later, because mm -hmm. NDC had tried Martin Amidu, yeah. they had tried Mohammed uh, uh, Mumuni mm -hmm. before he came along. So he's always been known to have the gift of the gap, very well liked, very affable guy. And since he became vice president, his stock has risen. 2013, came into power after Mills dies, wins that election in 2012. Then he rules to 2016 and loses a sitting president, quite unprecedented. Easily the front runner. But won in three months of campaign in 2012. Yes. Also so I, I don't think there's much to be said here. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I do not think the delegates that I have spoken to and the people you talked to in the NDC are in the mood for the kind of change because they feel like he has an unfinished business and they also feel like in opposition it's, it's not the time for experimentation and that type of thing. They feel he's well marketed enough and they, they know what he can do, right? So give it to him. Yes, and they're also saying that because we are in an economic crisis, you need somebody with experience. So this is the message they are selling. Okay. So, and it seems to me as if a lot of the influential people in the party have agreed that he's going to, to take okay, it. Okay, okay. Kojo Bons is an interesting one. Um, Ashanti region is going to be interesting in this election because they have the la they've always been interested in an election, but there's a feeling that 
there's an Ashanti equation somewhere that if NDC does well in Ashanti, because they suspect that there could be some issues in MPP where turnout for MPP will be lower, so that if you get a good candidate or a supporting candidate from the Ashanti region, it would help the NDC's numbers. Because NDC usually does above a certain 22% or so to win an election. So two Ashantis have thrown their hats in the ring, Kojo Bonsu, former mayor of Kumasi, and then Dr. Kwabna Dufour. Um, Kojo Bonsu is interesting because his tenure as mayor ended a bit on a sour note mm -hmm. because of some issues with Menshia, but he's patched up with them. A lot of people credit him for KJTR market. He's a known figure, he's liked. So something I'll say, usually when somebody runs against the front runner, Spio Gabra, their votes get whittled down, they get ostracized. But Alabi lost to Mahama, he's still part of the group. Mm -hmm. I still think, even if this guy loses, he's still part he of the center. He's not seen as some traitor type. Mm -hmm. That tells you that there's only one center of power. In previous elections, it was either Obed or Rawlings, mm -hmm. Mills, Rawlings. So those fights led to wars of attrition. I don't really see that for this guy. But for my, this... My, my, before you go to Kremlin, so this guy was appointed by the guy he wants to remove. Yeah, but that doesn't make that it, doesn't it, matter. It, it, it's not a big deal. We've seen that in many many contests. I mean, but except that this guy made you a mayor, which is like a lower tier compared to even if you were a minister. How dare you contest him? Look, democracy allows that, I know, but in terms of political might, wealth, it's a mystery. I think he's just hedging his bets. I think he just wants to show that he's available and that if possibly there's something in future that they want. Because to I'm use. looking at whether he's had a a position in the past in the party that he's known. Mahama has done MP before. Kwabna Dufour has been governor. Mayor of Kumasi. Mayor of Kumasi. It's a big, it's a big job. Okay, let's go to the next so candidate. The, the one that I, I feel is interesting is two, two things, and we should, we should look at the polls later. The reason it's interesting is, as I said, in the past, a lot of the people have contested the front and they haven't had much means. This guy has the means. That's number one. Number two, you're seeing some former male people coalesce around him. Rojo Metal Nunu, you see... Uh, Solomon Kansa. You I see... That. Uh, in, in, yeah, initially, Baba Kamara mm. was around that mm. group. I even saw, um, what do you call it, Fritz Bafo. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So you see people who have been close to power coalesce around him. Yeah. For what that's worth. We don't know how central they are in the mm -hmm. NDC now. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it interesting. The fact that he has money and the fact that he has some experienced people around him. But I still feel like when you look at the way the NDC thinks, and if you look at the elections in the past, there's a way you can gauge the mood of a party. And he's also much older. So the, it also works against him. The, the money part, though, Bernard, I, I don't know if I should disagree with you, and I'm going to disagree with you. His bank is not his bank anymore. That would have been the cash cow. We do know that his media conglomerate is struggling. This is public knowledge. How dare you say this guy has money to run against someone who's been president and vice president? Even if you put your Mahamas S. Gracia as MP for Bole Bamboy between 96 and 2000 and 2004, it, it defeats this guy completely. His bank is taking, his media conglomerate is gone. I mean, Charlie, money. Well, but... I, I think that's why you and I don't have a lot of money. Okay. Because we obviously don't understand money that well. <laughs> what I'm telling you is that, mm -hmm. the, for example, his message, okay? So take today's informal newspaper. His message has been very clear. He's talking about helping party people. In the informal, they reported that he said he was going to pay party executives. So he's bringing a financial... So his campaign is hinged on two things. Okay. He says the economy is shattered. I was former governor, former Bank of Ghana. I was former uh, uh, minister of finance. So I can fix the economy. But he's also saying that I can rearrange the personal economics of people who volunteer and work for the party. I'll build party offices for you. So he's talking on the basis that he knows he has finances. Okay. Okay. Now, we don't want to talk about people's personal wealth without evidence, but I'm saying to you that to own the level of business entities he owned, the fact that his bank has collapsed, his insurance company is still working. Okay. There are other businesses that are still running. Mm -hmm. So everybody knows that Dr. Dufour is a man of means. So I'm saying that these are the two factors. Okay. The fact that he has some experience around him and the fact that he does have money to, uh, to, 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 to stage a campaign. You've seen his billboards. Yeah. So it means that it may be different. But I'm saying that, look, it's very clear there's only one winner here. Okay. So it looks obvious, but the percentage, does the percentage mat matter even in this race? Well, let's, let's look at what That's a good question. So in 2019, this was what happened. This is the 
current president. At the time, he was the, he was the uh, in president who had lost in 2016. Yes. And, and then he was the former president. Seeking the re-election. And again, the mood of the party was for him. 95%. And 95% in a field of seven is statistically like a shellacking. Mm -hmm. All right? Professor uh, uh, Joshua Labi, one, closest less than 2%. <laughs> the speaker, at the time he was a, a, a minority leader, 1%. The gentleman who was supposed to be the, the Alan who had to done Mills. this before, yes. So Alan Nanado yeah. spill Mills. Mills. Look at where he is. He didn't even get 1%. So Gusitano as well. So, so the NDC is very clear on who they want. And I don't think, and so my point is that if for six candidates, seven candidates, he had 95, and this is when NDC had just lost power and they were bruised. Now they smell blood. He's going to get much higher than this. So you don't even see... So these people, six of them, struggled to raise 5% of their votes. Two people going against him, they may be struggling to raise... Except, of course, the reasons I give. Because the third candidate has money. Yes. It's possible. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing to notice is that... So this is the gentleman who picked the forms for him. So it tells you that they sort of patched up. This guy is still. But when I, why are you looking at money? Look at experience. Alabi's experience, Greater Accra Regional Minister, yeah. has been involved in NDC things for many years. Yeah. Bagbin has been MP to, since forever. Yeah. Experience is there. He should have a constituency. I mean, he was minority leader, majority leader. He has yeah. constituency. Guzi Tano was the guy that was, in fact, there was even rumor that M Mills lost 2000 because Guzi Tano looked like Jerry Rollins and people decided. I mean, all of those things. Spiogabra has been doing this thing for like forever. He's been trying yeah, to yeah, be yeah. flag bearer. Sly Mensa has yeah. been MP before, yeah. has been at NHIS. So all of these people put together. Nuruddin may be the only guy, businessman, yeah. who yeah. may not be very yeah, popular yeah, yeah, poli yeah. politically. Yeah. If all of them, with all the experience, and maybe small, small money could still mm -hmm. fail to make 5%, I don't know how Dr. Kwame Nadufo is really, yeah. unless, of course, yeah. Like you've, the theory you've given, the yeah. candidate, the party decided that yeah. we are giving it to this guy. We don't care what happens. The thing about political parties, in the little experience I have, is that political parties are not looking for who is experienced. They are not looking for who can do the work. They are looking for who can win the election. <laughs> That's how they think. That's what Delegates don't say, um, this guy has 10 years of experience at the World Bank. He's great. No, they, can he win the election? And how do they assess that? Has he been marketed well enough? Can he campaign? Mm -hmm. And then can he bring resources? They don't think about all the things around, oh, he's done. No. Which is why all these guys didn't get anything. All right? Now, I expect this similar kind of numbers here. The mitigating factor being that Dufour's team seemed to have a bit more resources. But I don't, I don't see anything beyond the Mahama over 90-something percent. That, that's very interesting. Um, let's stay with Spio Gabra. He just diminished. Is that the final nail in his coffin? Because the performance here was not good. And it appears he's no more interested in the NDC race. He has not even expressed any interest. Meanwhile, he used to say it was Spio's time. Spio's time expired. <laughs> I don't know whether you are asking me a question or you are No, I'm just me. looking at how he disappeared. <laughs> no, no. I mean, because, you, you know, the, the thing is that eras change, times mm -hmm, change, mm -hmm, right? So, mm -hmm. the, the, and I feel like the way Spio's whole, the, the whole issue about Mills' health and how it was framed as if he was the one who put the Going issue out. Him. It damaged him a lot. Mm -hmm. And then he was a minister under uh, Mahama, right? But he's never really quite been the same mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And I think he has other priorities now. What happens to Joshua Alabi? You were the second in the race. Now you are the guy who went to pick the forms for the guy who won the last time. Is it an indication that, oh, I've given up? Or when I join him, there are chances for me in the future? How do you read it? You see, politicians are not foolish. So they know. If you get 1.5% after traveling around the country six times, <laughs> spending all your savings, I mean, if you are his wife, what you tell him to do? That you should continue? You mean, so I, I, you I, mean I, if I, I was I, Professor Gorski, yeah, you, you, you know, join the winning team. Look, mm -hmm. the mood of the party, they are not interested in, we, you do UPSA, you are a good guy. Mm -hmm. So we'll come and help <laughs> us win the election, and then we'll look for something for you. And whenever we have a big lecture, we do it at UPSA, yes. we credit you. And like then we did one today. Yeah, yeah today, today. <laughs> yeah, and in fact, to be fair, I mean, I went to UPSA today, and when you look at the place, mm -hmm. it's clear that there is a brain behind what has happened there. So he's obviously 
a very well respected member of the NDC. And I think the fact that he picked the forms is a signal that the, 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 the party's leaders or the, the party, they want to give Muhammad a chance to come back to redeem himself because he has only one term. Later on, we'll talk about what happens post Muhammad if he even wins. Mm -hmm. But that's a different equation. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that it's very clear he's going to win. The polls we've looked at suggest that the Muhammad, Muhammad is in the lead. So for both people who are NDC supporters and even people who are not NDC supporters, his visibility is very, very much ahead of the other candidates. So I, I think it's, it's almost a foregone conclusion. The, exci the real excitement is in the MPP race, uh, Umaru. Let's look at the people who are going against him again, the current people who are running. And if you look at the next uh, slide, okay. um, and walk us through that one. No, okay. this, this is, so this is what the pollsters yeah, have so, been saying so, in relation to who is running for what. So there was a poll that was done. One was done in January. The other was done in April. And they asked people who they preferred to lead the NDC. Now, this was for people who said they were MPP, so NDC supporters. Mm -hmm. Right now, I need to show you this first before I come to this. So, in this in this one, sorry, I think there was one in the in the general one. There was a general one that they asked all supporters, mm -hmm. all 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 respondents. Muhammad had about seventy seven. So that's whether MPP or NDC. Yes, and mm -hmm. then uh, Doctor Dufo had about seventeen percent, and then uh, Kojobun had about three percent. That was for both MPP and NDC. But when they disaggregated and just brought out. NDC supporters, same question, overwhelmingly, similar number to what you had for the previous election. So the insight here is that among NDC supporting people, they think Mahama is the person to lead them into the next election. So the numbers that you're seeing for um, Kwabna Dufo, 4%, and Kojo Bonsu, 3%, is very small. So, so it's simply looking like what we are predicting it would look like? I mean, to be fair, two, two caveats. This is not for delegates. This is for people who we were polled by Global Info Analytics in 80 constituencies and, the disagree and who said that they support NDC. So they may not even be delegates. So this is the feeling around this sample of voters who say they support the NDC, who may not even vote in the primaries. Okay, okay. Right? But, so it's a dipstick into popularity. It's like a popularity test. Mm -hmm. So the point is that Mahama is the f overwhelming le leader in, th in that space. Well, this is the Situation Room on City TV. Uh, we are just trying to help you make sense of how it's looking like, how the picture is looking like at uh, the NDC side of things. We'll be delving into the NPP next. Um, but, of course, we are looking at who is doing what in which area. The campaign trail, though, is heated. Uh, John Mahama is all over the place. He's, he's campaigning. He's sending a message that he doesn't want to feel like he has said this to Ghanaians. He said yeah. people keep giving him stones wherever yeah. he goes to. Yeah. How are the other people doing? You see, the other insight from your question comes back to why I think he's going to win. If, you see, the, the message he's putting across is a national message. So... He has an election on 13 May. Yeah. But he's saying... He's speaking beyond the... <laughs> he an, he's, he's not even telling people that vote for me, I'm better than Dufour or Kwebjo Bonsu. He's telling people that when I come back, I will continue to abandon projects that Akuvado abandoned. I'm going to restore... I'm going to cut ex gracia Do you get it? He is taking on the president and the presumptive MPP candidate and so he's, he's looking at December 2024. That tells you that the people crafting his message know that this is a foregone conclusion. If I asked you to give me a percentage that you thought he would win by, do you have any idea? No, I, I don't think he'll get below 93%. I, I, that's what I'm saying. Like the, the, this figure and the figure for the previous election, he, he, I don't, if he gets below 90%, I'll be surprised. I'm thinking he'll be make beyond 95%. But let's see what happens. <laughs> this is a situation room on the city uh, TV. We'll be back to talk about the new patriotic party. The pool there or the crowd there is um, larger than what the NDC has on offer. And the Congress is coming up November, uh, the latest.